Hi folks, this is a video on sampling in geography. Uh, sampling is very important for field work because it helps us to get an idea of how we're going to collect data. So first off, what is sampling? Sampling is deciding how you are going to collect your data in what's essentially an effective way. You can't ask everyone in the world to fill in a questionnaire, you can't measure every millimetre of ground somewhere, you have to pick a series of points to work from. And that's how we sample, we go right, well how are we going to pick those points? How are we going to pick those people? And there are three main approaches that we look at when we're sampling, which are random, systematic and stratified sampling. Each has benefits and drawbacks and each has um, a best use application, so somewhere where you can use it best over, over every other type. Key terms that we need to know are bias and anomaly. Bias is where either accidentally or deliberately you as a researcher um, influence the results in some way. That is bias. Generally, it's considered to be a bad thing, but not always. We will come to that. An anomaly is a result that doesn't fit the pattern. Um, something that is just wildly out to the edge somewhere. We try to avoid anomalies, we try to avoid bias, because that way we get what's called a representative sample. You may have come across sampling in other um, subjects, but in geography this is how we refer to it. So. If we are to sample, we need to consider our random, systematic and stratified samples. And I'm going to use the example of an area of land and we're going to be uh, investigating what the soil type is like in each specific part of the land. Let's start with random sampling. Random sampling involves just randomly picking several points. We've got 16 squares, we're going to pick four points because that is easier than doing the whole thing. So randomly we'll pick four points. So we'll go for um, here, we'll go for here, we'll go for here, and we'll go for here. Randomly selected. You can use a random number generator if you want to by numbering the squares. There's various ways. Now there's a good thing about random sampling. If you're picking it randomly, you're not biased. You're just going, mm, OK, we'll go here, here, here and here. You're just deciding completely randomly. So you're not putting your influence in immediately. Also, it's quick and easy. The whole point of sampling is to be quick and easy. This is quick and easy. But there are problems. Number one, we're looking for soil type. We're not going to get soil types from either the car park or the pond. Our sampling is let us down here. We're going to get anomalies. Also, if you look, they're all in this top corner here, really. So accidentally, I've managed to put some bias into there. Completely biased, I haven't meant to, but that's how it's turned out. So random sampling has got positives, but it has got drawbacks. We also can think about systematic sampling. Now, systematic sampling um, is based on a system. You pick every how many squares. So, if we're looking at systematic, we might want to say measure the temperature change from the car park. For this, we'd want to take temperature at the car park, and then we might want to go in a line from there. So, in a system, we're picking every let's say, every box in a diagonal line. It could be every other box, it could be every third box, depends how big your sample is. It's good because it's quick and easy. It is biased. That can be a positive and a negative though, in that it's negative if we're putting influence onto it because we're trying to get a good sample of the area. But if we're trying to work out temperature change, we do actually want to pick a line 
to work from in a system so even though we're biasing it we'll get we can make an easy graph out of it um, and we could also repeat the experiment across there so systematic it has got its uh, uses but they're not it's not perfect for every application now finally we've got stratified sampling and stratified sampling is the one that uh, you are most likely to use in social sciences. So uh, geography, but also things like sociology um, and psychology if you are sampling people. Stratified sampling goes, right, okay, let's have a look at the number of uh, different types of, in this case, land that is available. Got the car park which fills up all together, let's call that one square. We've got the bush which altogether fills up about well, one square, and the pond, which probably altogether fills up one square. So, if we've got 16 squares, which we have, we've got one square of bush, one square of car park, one square of pond, and then we've got um, 16 minus 3. In fact, actually, the pond's probably more like two squares. So we'll see two squares of pond, one square of car park, one square of bush, and then 12 squares of ground, we know that we need to have um, a ratio there. If there's 12 squares of ground and four squares of stuff that we can't measure, the car park, the pond and the bush, well ratio of 4 to 12 there, uh, we can reduce that down to 1 to 3 because we're dividing by 4 so we know that if we're going for um, these squares we know that we need to have one square perhaps in the bush or in the car park or in the pond to give us uh, our non-soil data and we need to have three squares in the rest of the grid so that we can get our soil data. So it's complicated to come to, but the idea is you're trying to be fair, you're trying to consider all the different types of land. So you might go, right, okay, we know that we need to have one in, let's go for the car park again, um, and then we need to have three more squares. Now, uh, how are we going to pick those squares? Well, generally, we then put a random sample in the squares that are not covered by bush, pond or car park. So you are putting in a bit of bias but actually you don't have a huge amount in there and you really decrease the risk of anomalies because you're going right we're not going to bother with the bush, the pond and the car park altogether we're going to pick one location and use that only. It's not a perfect example this, I'm just giving you the idea of how it works. It does take more time and effort though. That's the big problem with stratified sampling. So, what are the best ways to then uh, use these sampling strategies? Random sample um, is a little difficult to use because it tends to add a lot of bias. However, if you've got a single type of ground, so if it's just a field with no features in it, Random sample is great, no problems, because you don't have to take anything else into account. So if you've got a single ground type, that's great. Also, if you've got one single population of people, so say a crowd who are right there in front of you, that would be fine. It's also good to use within a stratified sample. So once you've decided which bits you're putting in and which bits you're taking out, doing a random sample within those categories works really well. Stratified sample is the one that we'll probably use the most. It's good for taking populations, so if you're looking at uh, different streets, um, different houses, and you're giving them a questionnaire, really useful. If you've got a mixed type of ground, it's good because you can divide up the ground and then randomly sample within it. 
It's also good for rainfall and wind because you might want to take certain areas out of your sample, like a building. You might not be able to get onto the roof, so you can't use that. But systematic is useful as well. Systematic is good for measuring change. So if you want to measure temperature change, rainfall change, wind speed or di direction change from a certain area, systematic is great because you can plot a really nice easy graph. If you're doing distance from a building and you're taking your samples at every point, it means that you can figure out your graph of temperature change. Because you can go, here are temperatures from the building. So it's got its own uses. We'll do more of it in class, um, but if you've got any questions, let me know. Thanks very much.